thought about it, and I'll go on from there. But uh, I don't want to stir the pot up too much. But uh, anyway, they're, they're traveling. Pray that God have mercy and get my wife back. Uh, she's traveling by herself, bless her heart. And uh, I don't have to make a special trip this afternoon to get her back home. <laughs> Ah, uh, praise God. Well, we got a lot of birthdays this week, uh, and the June has already been mentioned. It. I, I told Dana I'd sing happy birthday to her uh, out in the foyer, and, uh, but anyway, she said, no, you don't have to do it. So uh, I'd, I, I, I told her I'd be more than happy to sing her a happy birthday song, but said, don't, don't do it, Pastor. And I said, okay, I won't. Had a milestone 16, and uh, Ben turned 20. Uh, here the other day, so we got a lot of milestones this week, and uh, we're just so honored to have everyone in the house of the Lord. Uh, Miss Alicia, thank you so much. She handles pressure uh, greater than anybody I know. You just dump it on her plate, and she takes care of it, and uh, I appreciate her stepping up today. It's so good to have Brother and Sister Lane with us from Florida today, uh, a great man of God. I want to bring him up here in just a moment. Uh, our ushers are getting ready, and we're going to receive our tithes and our offering this morning. I just thank you for your faithfulness and your giving to the Lord. And I continually to say to you, God is blessing Destiny Church because of the faithfulness of the people that are in this house and watching online. So we thank you so much for your giving. We're going to bring our tithes and our offering to the Lord this morning, and then we'll bless it. And uh, we'll continue with worship this morning. God bless breakthrough in your finances, a breakthrough in your family. I need about 50 people to shout breakthrough, breakthrough, breakthrough. Come on, somebody shout breakthrough, breakthrough. Come on, somebody shout breakthrough. Come on, clap your hands up high, everybody. Come on. Thank you for the privilege and the opportunity we get to be in your house today. I lift before you the tithes and the offering of your people. We call it blessed because we ask it in the name that's above every name, the name of Jesus. And we give you praise in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Brother Lang, I'm going to get Brother Lang to come up here right quick. And uh, I want him to greet you today. Get our uh, praise team back up here. And they're going to continue in worship in just a moment. Brother Lang has uh, got a lot invested in this church. Y'all just don't know how much he's got invested in this church. But uh, I appreciate him and his lovely wife. Behind every uh, good man, there's a great woman. And uh, so I honor them today. Been preaching the gospel for many, many years. Uh, the more you're around him, the more you'll just love him and appreciate his spirit. And uh, I'm so honored that they're here today. He is uh, retired and uh, from ministry, and now he's getting to do some things that he's never got to do before. Has a little freedom, hallelujah. And so uh, they're uh, coming through Alabama and going back through different places of the world and coming back to Alabama and just kind of making, you know, it's, when, you, when you got freedom, you can just kind of come and go as you please. They've got a resort room over at the Finnell's house, I understand. It's up in the upper chamber and uh, upper room. It's the upper room up there. So they got a key to the house. And uh, they say they can come and go as they please. So uh, we're just so honored them today. Would you welcome Brother Lang this morning just to greet you and say hello. I love you, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. I won't take up a whole lot of time because we always know this pastor has something to say worth listening to. But he was talking about retiring and I was talking to the people of the church and one man said, Brother, we hate to see you go, but we really hate to see Sister Lang go. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so anyway, uh, that's kind of the way that is. 
And that might not be the first time something similar to that has been said. <laughs> but anyway, we live in a crazy world. I'm sure you know that. Back when I was a boy, my dad had some coon dogs. And I'd been coon hunting with him. Didn't like it too much. My feet got cold. But before he'd take them dogs out, he'd give them the shots. He'd call them getting inoculated. Well, I've been inoculated. <laughs> people say you got to get, get, get your vaccine. Other people say, I ain't getting no vaccine. And some say, well, well, whatever. Social distancing, not social distancing. And the country is divided. You're all kinds of junk from all kinds of junkies. A people. <laughs> but I come here and I see worship. I come here and I get into his presence. We go now to visit a few other churches and it's kind of interesting to see the personality of the different churches. I watch people, maybe more than I should, so, but I watch love worshipers. Brother Ted, his family, worshipers. I look around, worshipers, his sister here, worshipers, and all over the place. And there's not a lot of things you can give God. You give him worship, you, you, you can give him your money, but it goes in your bank account. To benefit you. You can give him your car, but you still drive it. But when you give him worship, Amen. you give him something that blesses. Have you ever heard of bless the Lord? Oh my, how do we bless the Lord? We worship. We worship. So may God bless you for being worshipers. God bless you for having the kind of pastors that you do. And uh, for having all this wonderful singing. Didn't my young'uns do good this morning? Son. Yeah, I'm proud, okay? <laughs> God bless you. Thank you, Pastor. We'll turn the lights back down. Will y'all stand back up with us as we enter into once again that time of, of worship my dad was talking about and I am so honored to be a part of a body of believers that can just take some time and get lost we're not ashamed not only are we not ashamed we can't live without it we can't make it without the presence of God so, Heavenly Father, as we stand here today, God, I ask you that you would saturate this place. God, that you would just come in and let your glory fill it. I pray that every need in this house would be met. Holy Spirit, we ask you, Lord God, that you would do whatever it is your will and your way to do that you would fill our hearts and our minds to receive it. Because God, unless you come, we are nothing. If you don't show up, there's no reason for us to be here if not for your presence.
so thankful, Jesus, we can run to you. We honor your presence, Father. I thank you, Jesus, that we can run to you. That your presence comes and fills this place. And that we can go running boldly to the throne room of God. That you are here to meet every need. We honor your presence, Father. We worship you.
thank you for setting the atmosphere in this house today. I almost forgot about praying over this bucket. There are names in this bucket that need to be saved, healed, and delivered. We have been praying over this bucket for some months now. And we have been witnessing the miracle working power of God as he brings them out of the darkness into the marvelous light. Would you come in a faith agreement with me right now? Father, in the name of Jesus, every name in this bucket shall be saved shall be delivered and healed. I come against the sin and the darkness that has invaded their lives. I break the chains off of them by the power of the blood of Jesus. Father, Lord, we believe that you're a God that still answers prayer. And Father, I pray that every name in this bucket shall have their name written in the Lamb's book of life. Father, I thank you because the word of God is true. And so we send the spirit of the living Christ, the anointed Christ after them. Open their eyes that they may see and their hearts that they may know that there is a God and that he rules and reigns over them. And he has given them life and they can have it more abundantly. Father, I thank you for it in advance. I give you praise for it in advance. Before my eyes ever see it, before my ears ever hear it, I give you the glory and the honor and the praise for what you're doing in, in the lives of these names in this bucket. I give you praise and glory because it belongs to you. Somebody ought to clap your hands and praise him because he is still God. sense his presence the anointing that makes the difference is here God's about to speak to us he's about to challenge us he's about to light us up I'm already halfway lit but he's about to really light us up turn with me to Jonah chapter 1 verse 1 Jonah chapter 1 verse 1 I want to talk today about the mission I want to talk about the mission revealed the mission refused and the mission reaffirmed I remind you that Jonah was called on a mission but I also want to submit to you as a church we're on a mission we've been called by God himself mm. we cannot fail in this mission lives are hanging in the balance on what the church does with a mission this is a story that is very familiar to us or should be familiar to us. As little children in Sunday school, vacation Bible schools, we hear about a man named Jonah getting swallowed up by a fish, a whale. And we take it as a child story. But today... My brothers and sisters, there's a serious moment in this that God has pricked my heart. It's more than a story about a man and a fish. It's about a mission. It's about a mission. It's about a city. It's about people. Mean people. Wicked people. 
undeserving of God's grace didn't have a gnat's chance of getting saved but God grace the grace of God reached out to a group of people that Jonah wanted God to kill Jonah had a bad attitude about the grace of God. And we got churches today that have a bad attitude when it comes about the grace of God. They're glad they're saved, but they don't want anybody else saved. <laughs> they're glad they're a part of the church, but they don't want anybody else a part of the church. You, you, you can't pick and choose about the grace of God. I'm going to get off of this because I don't want to get on it. You know, we, we, we're in a, he talked about a divided nation, but you know, all lives matter. And when you start putting a color on a life, you've already crossed the line and messed up. It ain't about the color. The color has nothing to do with it. I'm preaching good and I ain't even started yet. We want people to join our side or join our club. All lives matter to God. They are all precious in His sight. You may not give a rip about them, but God's love. He reached further down than they could reach up. Do you remember when God came by your life? Do you remember when God spoke to you? When God reached out and got a hold of you and did something that no man could do for you. He washed you, cleansed you, delivered you, changed your life. It wasn't the church that did it. It was God that did it. We give the church way too much praise when it comes to salvation. Oh, I'm getting bold today. They ain't a church on the face of this earth that can save your soul. There's only one man that can save you. There's only one man that can save you. His name is Jesus. Now the world would like you to believe there's a lot of different ways and there's a lot of different gods that can save you. But there was only one that went to a cross. Oh, I'm preaching now. There was only one man that went to a cross who was sinless. His blood was sinless. And he hung on that cross because he looked down in time and he saw that every one of us would need a Savior. He saw that every one of us would need our sins forgiven and washed and cleansed. And he knew that in that blood there was sacrifice for sin. And he knew that whosoever would call on the name of the Lord would be saved. Everybody thankful that you're saved this morning. I just, I can't help but praise him. I, I can't help but thank him. I, I was once lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. I just can't help but thank him. I, I can't wait on your praise this morning because I don't know what he did for you, but, but I know what he did for me. I, if it had not been for Jesus, if it had not been for the Lord, I, I'd still be lost. I, I'd still be on my way to hell. I, I'd still be blind. I, I still would have no life. But Paul said, thanks be unto God. Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift to me. Oh, thank you, Jesus. World of mission. We're on a mission. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, we're going to fulfill the mission. There are gifts and talents in every person in this house tonight that God is going to cause to come to the surface. God never gives you something that He doesn't have intentions for you to use. And so God is going to use you in this last harvest. And the world will see that the gift is not yours. The gift is never yours. 
it always comes from the Lord and when they see something in you when they recognize you possess something that they don't possess they have to know that something greater had to give it to you something more powerful lives on the inside of you his name is Jesus I'm trying to calm down and y'all trying to work me up I got to get to where I'm going here today and I've been whoo I don't know if you feel him like I feel him but I I feel the closeness of my help my my help is with me this morning I I feel his hand on my shoulder I I'm not I'm not fearful anymore now Marcus I I'm plugged in to the source and I'm on a mission. I'm not on the Blues Brothers mission. I'm not putting the band back together. I'm on a mission from God. I have a word from the Lord today, and I'm trying. I'm trying to get to it in just a minute. His Spirit is here. Here's what I want us to do. Put one of your hands over your ears. And I want you to ask the Holy Ghost to let you hear what the Spirit of the Lord would say to you today. God, anoint my ear that I may hear the word of the Lord for myself. Give me ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord would speak to me personally not only as a church not only as a believer but give me ears to hear what you would say to me this day that I may rise up and I may rise up and do the works of the Lord that I may obey him with all my heart with all my mind and with all my soul, work on me today, God. Put something on the inside of me that man cannot control. Give me a fresh word so that I can fulfill my mission and my calling. And in Jesus' name I pray. Thank you for it, Holy Ghost. And I give you glory. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know if it was done intentionally, by accident or whatever. I got three bottles of water. I'm good to go today. Jonah chapter 1. Jonah chapter 1, verse 1. Jonah chapter 1. I just had enough sense to get that off. I was feeling a little warm. The Lord gave this message to Jonah, Psalm of, son of Amathea. Get up and go to the great city of Nineveh. Announce my judgment against it because I've seen how wicked its people are. But Jonah got up and went in the opposite direction to get away from the Lord. He went down to the port of Joppa where he found a ship leaving for Tarshish. He bought a ticket, went on board, hoping to escape from the Lord by sailing to Tarshish. The mission. Father, I thank you for the worship and I thank you for the word. I pray that you take me and lead me and guide me and direct me in this today. I need your help. Can't do it without you. I depend upon your Holy Ghost. Now, God, speak through me as your vessel. And we give you praise and we give you glory. 
Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Look at three people and tell them this word is for you. I just know it. Thank you, Jesus. This passage of Scripture invites us to consider how well the church is doing at fulfilling its purpose and its mission. It's a story not just about a rebellious preacher out of the past, but about a religious people of the present. I think we have watered down this message of Jonah and this fish so much that I don't think the world really wants to hear the message. Because the message about is about the mission of the church. It contains the answer to the question about the purpose of the church. And the way that your church responds to this message of Jonah will determine whether the church will be missed in our community if we were suddenly to disappear. I want to look at the mission that was revealed. The first words that come to Jonah are, Arise and go to Nineveh. He's saying in Alabama language, if I can break that down for you, get up, get busy, and do something. It's very easy to get complacent in the church. Jonah was stunned and he reacted and he said, Nineveh, you got to be kidding me, God. If you look at the story, the Jews hated the Ninevites. Nineveh was the capital of Assyria. It was one of the most powerful and wicked nations on the earth at that time. As a result, Nineveh was not considered a mission field to the Jews. The Ninevites were considered beyond the reach of God's redemptive grace. Stephen Shoemaker made this statement and he said, it reminds me over the years we've changed the name of Nineveh to Babylon, Rome, Berlin, Moscow, Havana, Iran, and Iraq. Nineveh is the land where godless people live and they threaten to take us over. But Nineveh doesn't have to be in a far, far some distant land. It could be your next door neighbor. Nineveh, let me place it to you like this. Nineveh is any place where you refuse to engage in the mission of the gospel. It's amazing that there are millions of people in America who have no affiliation with any kind of a religious association and we feel like we have to evangelize foreign countries and we do. But who was sent to America to evangelize and minister to America? We've got enough churches in America today to save the entire USA. But we are not fulfilling our purpose and our calling of what God is wanting us to do. God has called every one of us when it comes to missions. God has called every one of us into missionary work. We get confused about that because we feel like he has to call us to be a missionary to this country or that country. But every day of your life, you are a missionary to somebody. Wherever you work, wherever you go, whatever you do, you are a missionary that has the gospel and the message and the power of hope within you. So wherever you go, God will use you to affect your community. You can change Wally World around if the anointing gets on you just right. God can set you up at the gas station and you're just pumping gas and you're just trying to get your tank full and out of nowhere, out of somewhere, somebody comes up beside of you and asks the question and you just begin to share with them the power and the love of God. God can use you anywhere at any time. God is still calling us to be his missionaries. And we talk about church growth and there's all kinds of statistics about church growth that are out there. But a lot of church growth only gets 
church grows is from people changing churches or people having babies in the church. But I just believe that God is growing his church and wanting to grow his church. He's wanting to save lost people. And the way he does that is through us. Notice the mission that was refused. Jonah got the word to go, but he refuses to go. This is not the first time that God ever spoke to somebody and they disobeyed God. It's not the first time that God wanted somebody to do something and they refused to do it. I'm sure probably most of us could understand Jonah's situation. Has God ever asked you to do something? <laughs> And you refuse to do it. Has God ever challenged you with something? And you said, not me. I can't do it. Let somebody else do it. But if God calls you, and God opens the door for you, and God puts it in his spirit for you, God's talking to you. And he wants you to do whatever he's wanting you to do. I, I, like, I like this statement that one man thought about this missionary work and uh, one deacon said he revealed it like this he said well my next door neighbor sees us get up every Sunday and see us go to church he knows where we are and if he wants to come he knows where to find us but I wonder what happened to Luke chapter 14 when Jesus said go out into the highways and the byways and compel them to come into my house instead of going to Nineveh Jonah took a ship to Tarsus God said go east and Jonah went west you know what happened next a storm <laughs> a storm arose you will find out with dealing with God it is much better to submit than to run because you can't outrun from God he'll find you wherever you land He's running from God. He's in a ship. He's in a storm. The people on the boat have figured out something's not right. God is upset. They cast lots and it fell on Jonah. And they go down to him and Jonah confesses. It's me. I'm running. So they think they're going to save Jonah from the storm and from God's judgment and from God's mission. So they started roaring and they started roaring. And as they roared, as they tried to get through the storm, it became worse. And finally he said, throw me overboard. They didn't want to. They knew something was about to happen. They thought he was about to die. But they threw him overboard. And when they threw him overboard, God was ready. Isn't it amazing how God can just have things lined up and you can't see it? Isn't it amazing how God can turn you around when you don't want to get turned around? Isn't it amazing that God can get you to see things that you didn't see before until it came obvious to you? Now then, whoo, he's in the belly of a fish. And there he has to get worked on a little bit in the belly of the fish. But some people are more concerned about other things than what they are about lost people. And so in the belly of this fish, I found out that the whale did not change Jonah's destination. It changed Jonah. Let me say it. I didn't say that right. The whale changed Jonah's destination, but not his disposition. It changed his geographic, but not his theological. The mission reaffirmed was the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time. And listen to this. It was the same word that he gave him the first time. God hadn't changed his mind. God's not confused. God's not messed up. It was arise and go to Nineveh. The mission never changes. Sometimes when you've been in church a long time, you've heard it and you've heard it 
and you've heard it and if it just becomes another something that we say and talk about. But I want to tell you, folks, God is concerned about lost people. You may not be concerned about them. It may not affect your house right now, but somewhere down the road of life, somebody next to you is going to get away from God and get in a storm, and they're going to need some help, and they're going to need some prayer. I am thankful unto God for those people who prayed for me when I was in a storm. I don't know about you. And so the whale spits Jonah out. He goes running to Nineveh. He's got a word for Nineveh. Yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Now Jonah's heart has not been changed. He is there out of a sense of obligation because he can't win with God. Reminds me of a lot of Christians sometimes. He gives the message, and now Jonah is waiting for the judgment of God to fall on these wicked people. And while he's waiting, these people do something unthinkable. They repent. (laughs) God sends a message to a group of people who are about to face the judgment of God and Jonah's about to rejoice in the fact that they're going to die and be swept off of the face of the earth and they get a message and they repent and they experience the grace of God. And Jonah gets mad. Jonah gets mad. He's upset. God, I knew you was going to do this. I go there with a judgment. I go there and tell them to turn or burn. And here you are. You're giving them life. You're sparing them. You ought to kill them. He gets mad. God's trying to deal with Jonah. God's trying to get Jonah to see your heart and your priorities all mixed up. And so he lets a plant grow over Jonah. And Jonah's so happy about the plant. And then God says... I'll send a worm (laughs) and I'll eat the plant up. Jonah's mad again because the plant was keeping the sun off of him. And now God says to Jonah, here's your problem, boy. You're more concerned about a plant than you are lost people. Help us today, church. We got to get concerned about lost people who come through these doors lost, but they leave saved. We got to get a compassionate about our city, about the mission on which we have to talk about. I'm telling you, the weather's one thing, but God's a whole lot better than the weather. We got something on the inside of the, we got hope that we need to be sharing with every person we can at every opportunity that we get a chance to. It's everywhere around us. God is opening up doors. You don't need to get upset when God saves the drug addict. You need to rejoice that God has saved the drug addict and you didn't have to go down that path. You need to thank God for anyone that gets saved and rejoice with them when they come and the Lord breaks the chains off of them and sets them free. I just believe that God is about to move upon this city. We have been praying for revival. We've been asking God for revival. And those that are lost need to know the power of his grace, the power power of his love and the power of his spirit. Hey folks, if God can save us, surely he can save them. If God can change us, surely he can change them. I'm not putting a limit on the grace of God and the power of God. We're on a mission to declare the spirit of the living God. The story of Jonah leaves us with a decision. Will we rejoice in the grace of God that extends to all people and share in the spreading of that grace? Or will we become upset as Jonah did that the grace of God was so freely given to everyone? How we accept the word of God, arise and go. Will it be willingly or begrudgingly? Jonah, in this story, 
is not make-believe. He's not a Disney World character. Can I say it like I feel it? Jonah is me and you. Me and you. Until the rebellious Jonah in each of our hearts has been confronted, the mission of the church is at a standstill. If the church were suddenly disappear, would anyone miss us being here? <laughs> a German theologian said this, The church exists by mission as fire exists by burning. Without a grateful acceptance of the mission of God, the church ceases to be the church. However, with it, the church becomes a reconciled Jonah, reconciling the world back to God. We have got to develop a love for people. We have love in this church. There ain't no ands, ifs, buts about it. This is, I ain't speaking to other churches, I'm speaking to this church now. This is a loving church. We are a forgiving church. We're not got our nose stuck up in the air. We're not better than anybody else. We are thankful to be where we are. And I believe if you come through those doors right there, you're going to feel and sense the love of God. I don't care where you've been in this world. And anybody who's been anywhere knows and feels. I love the testimony today about what this church did to him, the worship that he caught on to. I love it. I cherish it. I, I recognize the importance of the freedom of our worship. Because if you can't worship, you're not going to receive the word anyway. But it makes it so much better for the word to have liberty when we worship and set the atmosphere as we've been setting it around here and it gets the ground broke up, gets our hearts right so that we can receive the word of the Lord and God can do what he wants to do. Be open to the Spirit. Be led of the Spirit. Allow God to speak to you and use you for His glory. May I remind you, you are not your own. You have been bought with the price of the blood of Jesus. You will be amazed if you will allow the Spirit of God to lead you and guide you and direct you, you will be amazed at what God does through you that touches other people. I'm going to say something right here. It, it never ceases for, to God to blow my mind. I mean, he just, he just blows my mind all the time. If he can use a donkey. I thought of that other word. I just glad I got donkey out. <laughs> I thought he might wake you up. King James Version. <laughs> if he can use that donkey to talk, I know he can use you. He used me a lot of times. Beside myself. How, how does it? I don't, I don't understand how God can use people sometimes. Because sometimes we get up on the wrong side of the bed. I don't want to go there very much. I hope you don't get up on that wrong side of the bed. But every now and then you'll get up on the wrong side of the bed. Something happened to you the night before. Something happened to you the first thing in the morning. And it'll get you rubbed up a little bit on the wrong side. And then the next thing, the devil just piles some more stuff on you. And then he just keeps piling it on because he sees you're upset. And at that moment when you're frustrated and upset and aggravated, you can't be used of God because you're still frustrated about, you're thinking about that instead of what you're thinking about this. And God can't send somebody in your path that day because you ain't in the right frame of mind. Y'all know how patient I am. <laughs> I went by, just, just went by McDonald's today. It was raining. I got me a little app. I don't like going through the drive-thru no more. Bring it to me. Bypass the line, you see. Went to that little uh, app thing. I'm on number three. Now, I didn't get much this morning. I got a sausage biscuit and a drink. 
Now, how long do you think that takes to make? No, I didn't get 10 biscuits. I got one biscuit and one drink. And I'm sitting there, and I'm sitting there, and I'm thinking, Phew. and I'm thinking, and, I, and then, and then I, I looked on my phone. It's been five minutes. And these cars going through that drive through they just going by me left and right. I mean, they just coming by me left and right. Maybe I should have went through the drive through today because it, it's, it's working a whole lot better than this drive-up thing is. I, I, I went back my phone. Six minutes. I said, we're breaking the record today. Six minutes. And I said to myself, self, one more minute. I got to go to church. I can't sit here in this thinking thing. I got things to do. I'm running late now. I'm not out here just killing time. I'm on my I'm on a mission to get to church and can't get a biscuit and a drink. Dr. Pepper, that is. So you don't get confused. It's a sausage biscuit and a Dr. Pepper. It's not a lot in my opinion. Obviously, they're having issues. Not in the drive-thru. That drive-thru is humming, baby. It's kicking. I mean, they're just coming through left and right. Cars are going behind me. They're going around and coming out. This ain't making no sense. It's supposed to be quicker. Seven minutes. I said, well, I'm not going to sit here all morning waiting on a bit. I'm going to get out and go in and see. It's raining. I open the door. I make one step out. I get wet. Here comes the lady out the door. I get back in my car, roll my window down, and she said, Sir, I'm sorry. It took so long. I could not get the Dr. Pepper machine to work. I said, thank you. Rolled my window up and left. I knew she wasn't coming to church that day because she was working. But I thought I did pretty good for me being as patient as I am. Seven minutes. Seven minutes. That's a long time time to wait when you're trying to get somewhere and the devil was working on me at McDonald's before I got to church but I knew something was coming I knew we was going to have a good move of God today I knew we was going to get in the presence of God today I knew the spirit of the Lord had given me a word about mission And so today I'm not going to blow my testimony because I've got a tie on in a suit and tell that woman what I thought about this seven minutes. I did get to say by the grace and help of God, thank you. Sometimes you have to allow the Spirit of God to check you and to help you in situations in life to get you through the rough spots of life. Listen, if you gave everybody a piece of your mind every time you got flustered, you wouldn't have a mind left at the end of the day. The devil wants to rob you of your mission. He wants to stop you from fulfilling your purpose. God, the enemy will do everything to keep you from fulfilling what God has ordained for you that day. And you don't necessarily know that day what it is. You just got to walk by faith. Every day of our lives, we walk by faith. Sometimes the sun shines. And I've noticed on other days, it can rain. But either way, He's still God. 
Either way, he's still God. And if I can praise him while the sun is shining, you ought to praise him while the rain is falling. And if you can get in your mind and your heart, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. You need to be happy about God and where you're going and what you're doing. You're on a mission. Look at your neighbor and say, Neighbor, you're on a mission. Woo-wee. We may hear some testimonies out of this in the days to come. We may hear some testimonies out of this in the days to come. God may be setting us up from some miracle testimonies of what he's going to do in our lives through whoever he's going to do it through. I hope he messes them up and you up at the same time. I hope the Spirit of God gets on them and he gets on you. I hope you can't get a hold of me quick enough. Call me, tell me. I got a testimony to tell you what the Lord did through me this week. God uses anybody who will be willing to be used by the Lord. God doesn't use proudful people. He uses humble people. And when you humble yourself before the mighty hand of God, the Lord shall raise you up. There's been times in our lives that I've acted like Jonah. Hello. It got to me. There's been times that I acted like Jonah. God didn't do. Well, confession's good, I reckon. Jonah confessed to the people on the ship, and I'll just confess to Destiny Church. There's been times that God didn't do what I wanted him to do. And when that happened, my flesh got a hold of me and I got upset just like Jonah got upset. And I tried to tell God, you don't know what you're doing. Anybody ever been there? God, you're not doing what I ask you to do. What's wrong with you? I didn't have to go to the fish. (laughs) Dear God, I went to the pit of hell. (laughs) Are you listening to me? God has to strip you of everything of your theology mind to get you to understand what he is wanting to do in you and through your life. You've got to trust him whether you figure it out or not. You've got to trust him whether you understand it or not. You've just got to know that God is in control and if God be for you, come on now, if God be for you, who can be against you? You've got to be strong in your faith and your commitment to God. Here's what you've got to get to. If God says it, I've had a lot of decisions I've had to make in my life. If God says it, I don't have a choice, really. Pastor, if God says something to me and speaks to me about something, I have to do it whether you like it, lump it, or don't. And this made a lot of people upset sometimes because I feel like this is the direction that God is saying and they didn't understand it. But God didn't ask me to whether you understand it or not, Marcus. I can't call you on every decision that God puts in my spirit and see if you like it. You may or may not like it, but that ain't what God said. If God is speaking, do y'all believe God still speaks to us? He speaks to us through a word, through his spirit. He gives us confirmation. Well, a lot of times, God, I'm, I'm looking for that confirmation. Let, let me see. Let me hear something from somebody who don't. I can't tell you the times God has sent somebody to me and said something to me that they were clueless. They were clueless. So what in the world they just told me? But son, it lit a light bulb in me. The light came on. God will confirm his word to you. He'll show it to you. He'll make it bear witness in your spirit. You will know. Somebody else may not know. But you will know when it's God talking to you. And when God's talking to you, he's about to get a purpose in you. He's about to line you up for his mission. Think about this. 
Because of the word that Jonah spoke to the city, which you'd already covered, he spoke a word to a city and an entire city, 120,000. An entire city, here's a word, repents of the wickedness and sin, and God spares them. A city. Not two or three people. An entire city hears the word of the Lord and they repent. Well, you preach on repentance today and you'll stir up all kinds of devils in the church. Forget about the things on the outside of the church. You start talking about repentance in the church and people start backing up on you. We ain't got no other choice. Are you listening to me? We got to repent and get back right with God. We have to please Him more than we please our flesh, more than we please somebody else in the church. We got to please Him. We got to come in full surrender to the will of God and the plan of God and the purpose of God. Whew. And that mission and that purpose takes a process to get you through from one step in place to another. God's not going to leave you out here in the wilderness to do nothing. God never saved you so you could just sit down and get comfortable in the church. It's, it's the one of the most easiest things that Christian people do is get saved, get baptized, join the church, and sit down and do nothing. I don't want to stay here long. I might lose some people. The church is not a building. It is not chairs. It is people. People like you, people like me. We need each other in the church to function as the body of Christ should function. Your foot is just as important as your finger. Your finger is just as important as your ear. Every part of your body is important to the function of your body. Every part of this body of this church is important. Nobody is a nobody in the body of Christ. We are all important. God needs every one of us. I'm not speaking in tongues. God needs every one of us to function in the gift that he's given you. And there's many gifts. And there's many opportunities. And you can't do what I do and I can't do what you do. But I said it good the other night. But if you let us come together and we'll do something good together, something good's going to come out of it. God's going to take your gift, mix it with my gift, and your gift, and their gift. And when God starts putting all the gift in the body of Christ together, he always does something marvelous, and it's powerful, it's good, and it's wonderful, and it works. When man gets his hand in it and wants control of it and wants to do it, it messes up. But God's never messed up one time. Have you ever thought about that? God's never messed up one time. God's never made a wrong decision. God's never given a wrong answer. God's never opened a wrong door. God don't mess up. Well, if God doesn't mess up, who does? Huh? I do. If anybody missed it, it wasn't, it wasn't the Holy Ghost. It was me. I missed it. God help me. God help me. God teach me. God open my eyes. Open my ears. Let me hear so that I don't do it again. Let me understand what I missed. I thought, but I, I was wrong when I thought. I need to know. I need to hear. Lord, help me to understand your word. Speak to me from your word so that I may know what you're doing in my life. We're on a mission. And I guarantee you the devil don't like it. The devil does not like this church. He will do anything in his power to stop us, destroy us, divide us, and cause us to sit down and do nothing. Well, this could be good or this could be bad. I don't know how you're going to take it. But as the leader and the pastor of this church, we're not going to sit down and do nothing. I said again, didn't get too many amens. I said we're not going to sit down and do nothing. We're going to be busy about building the kingdom of God. 
We're going to do whatever we can do to build up the kingdom of God. We're going to love people regardless of their sin, regardless of their past, regardless of what they look like. We're going to love God. We're going to worship God, honor God. We're going to get busy in the kingdom. We're going to find missions, and we're going to find some needs, and we're going to fulfill those needs, and we're not going to get closed in the four doors of this house. We're going to do what God asks us to do. I just said a mouthful and I ain't got an answer for none of it. Isn't that something? I've just opened my big mouth. I don't even know what we're doing yet. But God does. God knows where we're going. God knows what we're doing. And if God will let let me see it and understand it, I I can get us going. There's one thing about you're not going to get no grass growing under my feet. Not going to do it. We're going to do something. This, the word's already out <laughs> in, in, this, in this area. We're a different kind of church than what they used to. <laughs> We're just a little different. Doesn't make us right, doesn't make us wrong. We're just different. We do it different. We act different. We worship different. But that's okay. Because I love what I feel in this house. I love what I get to experience in this house. I love it. The main, you know why I love Destiny Church? I love you guys. But I love it because God shows up in this house. I believe, I believe anybody's got any real reality that would tell you the truth. You can't go in that church and not feel God. Somewhere, somehow, God's going to let you feel him. He's going to impress something upon you. He's going to move upon you in that church. Now, you know, you may hear some of them unknown tongues in this church. But don't get scared. Because it's not of the devil. It's of God. God don't give you something to be scared of. God gives you something to be good in and to rejoice in. I just believe that God is going to take this church into missions and to use us to change people's lives. And we can't be like some other places because that's not who we are. We have to be who we are. And in the truth of reality of who we are, in the sincerity of our hearts, God will move and touch in a measure in which only he can do. God's working on me. And I hope he's working on you. Enlarge my vision. Enlarge our territory. Give me the wisdom and the understanding that I need. Because as you well know, I, early when we was looking at a building, I want to tell you how God has got my attention. When we were looking at this building, I was pushing every door, Brother Lane, that I could push, every button I could push. I am pushing and pushing hard trying to get this building. But it just wasn't in God's time. And we didn't have the finances to do it. Couldn't do it. The banks was wishy-washy with me. And it just didn't happen like I thought it would happen. So, then came this thing called COVID-19. God obviously knew it was coming, but Pastor Cody didn't know it was coming. And we had to do so much work on this building that it had killed us, being a new church. It had killed us. It killed me. A lot of pastors have quit the ministry over this COVID-19 thing because of the financial pressure and the load that it, that it, that it took on the churches. It just killed the church. 
And I told someone, God saved my little white self. Because he wouldn't let the doors open that I was trying to push. See, I was pushing and the doors wasn't opening. But that ain't the way God works. God don't have to have me to push a door. God opens the door for me. And then I walk through it. God don't need my pushing the door to get something done. God's in control. I'll say it again. God is in control. And sometimes we have to be reminded that he is in control of it all. And things have happened during this last two years that I do not have answers for. Cannot figure it out. And you can say why a million times and you're still not going to get an answer. You'll just have to trust in the Lord and his timing. Everything has a timing. Everything has a season. Everything has a purpose. And so God in his wisdom and his ways has taken care of us. God has taken care of us, provided for us every step of the way. I trust God. I said I trust God. Now you folks can walk out on me any day of the week, but I trust God. God is faithful. God is faithful. Not in some of his ways, but in all of his ways. He's faithful. He'll bring us to the place of victory if we allow him to lead us and guide us and direct us. We're on a mission, church. We're going to make it. We're going to do whatever God asks us to do. I'm not going to gripe. I'm not going to complain. I'm not going to get upset. If God says for you to get up and go, will you get up and go? Where are you going? I don't know. He may cause you to go to the grocery store. He may cause you to go to your neighbor. Your neighbor may be seeing you going to church every Sunday, but they don't know where. Because you ain't talked to them. Hello. We're worried about Africa. We got people in Arab, Alabama. Well, I don't want to go there. We got people in Arab, Alabama that is lost. If Judgment Day came today, they'd bust hell wide open. They're lost. They need a Savior. His name is Jesus. They need a church. I'd love to have them here, but man, if you ain't going to come here, find a church. Get in a church somewhere. Get busy. Mm, I feel the Spirit of the Lord today. Lift up your hands all over this house. Come on back, Brother Bobby. Father, I thank you because you're the Lord of us all. You're working on the church. You're working on Destiny Church. You're about to do something in us and through us that only you can do. I pray that we would be sensitive to us when you speak to us and challenge us. I thank you for your grace, for your mercy, for your goodness to us. There's no question about it. We are here because of the grace of God, plain, simple, and true. The reality of it is you're where you are simply because of the grace and the mercy of God that is with you. I believe that God is going to use us in a greater measure than we've ever known before. In simple, ordinary ways.
Holy Ghost, I pray that you would check our spirits, check our hearts today. We don't want to run from you. We want to run to you. If we'll run to you, you'll wrap your arms of love around us. And you'll fill us with yourself. You'll fill us with goodness and mercy and grace and truth. You'll give us those good things that the Father always wants to give his children. We love you and we honor you in this house. We thank you for what you've given us. Today, God, we're going to take communion. I'll let the guys, ushers, pass out the elements as we stay in the spirit of worship. Father, we thank you today for your presence that has come into this house to help us, oh God, to accept the calling of God and the purpose of God in our lives. set aside this moment to remember the great sacrifice that you paid for our sins we do this in an act of obedience to the scripture Father we thank you for saving us and keeping us and accepting us into the family of God. Sure, we got everybody served this morning. If you haven't been served, before we take communion, we're going to ask the Lord to forgive us of our sins so that we do not face the judgment of God. So, today, Lord, we ask you to forgive us of all of our sins. We ask you to cleanse us and deliver us. Father, as we take the bread and the juice, we pray, God, that we would remember the sacrifice that you were willing to give for us. And so, God, we thank you and we honor you for what you mean to us this day. Luke chapter 22, and when the hour had come, he sat down with the twelve apostles with him and said to them with fervent desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until it's fulfilled in the kingdom of God. He took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For this I say to you, I will not drink for the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. He took bread and he gave thanks and he broke it and he gave it to them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Would you participate of the bread?
likewise, he also took the cup after saying, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. Participate of the Jews. Would you just close your eyes and out of the depthness of your heart, just thank him for saving you. Lord, we thank you. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for your blood. Thank you for your sacrifice. So God, make us whole. Bring healing to the body of Christ. Give strength to your people. Father, we honor you and we love you and we praise you. And we thank you for every blessing. Thank you for every miracle every touch comes from you so God we honor you and we praise you this day Father we love you and we give you glory and honor because it belongs to you in the name of Jesus you just go by each one and they'll receive the good, good God. Father, now I pray that the blessings of the Lord would surround about your people. I pray that the spirit of peace would be upon them. I pray that your hand would overshadow them, that you would bless them in the city and bless them out of the city. I pray that you would use them mightily for your name's sake. Watch over us, God. Protect us. Use us for your glory. Set us on a mission to build up your kingdom. We give you the glory and the honor and the praise because it truly belongs to you. In Jesus' mighty name. I love you guys. Be blessed of the Lord. What a day. God bless. Have a great day. you've been waiting for all night. Somebody turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, he's able. Tell somebody else, he's able. Y'all ready? Exceedingly, abundantly. All you could ask for pain According to the power That worketh in you You God is able to do Just what he said up on God, cause he won't give up on you, he's able, how many believe it tonight, yeah, yeah, he's able, thank you Jesus, come on y'all, I need y'all to help me sing, God,